Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Marshall, how are we this evening? Clearly it's an evening because you're in a dark room right now. Yes, uh, the sun is going down. Uh, I don't have my usual uh, yeah, accoutrements uh, on the road. Yep. Uh, you know, coming from an undisclosed bunker. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I was going to say we never record at night, and that's what we're doing. So it's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. It's a different energy, you know? But yeah. Yeah. It's kind of that night evening vibe. Right. <laughs> the kids all talk about. <laughs> no, nobody talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. <laughs> I feel like we should have a music bed at this point. It's all saxophones. All right, make that happen. I'll do that. Do that in post-production. Yeah, I'll insert just a little clip. That'll be perfect. So uh, we're knee deep into this. Uh, what's on the slate for today? We are so knee deep into this. I love talking about culture. I love this idea of results and relationship uh, being, you know, something that you have to balance both. And uh, last time, you know, we talked about just overall culture does trickle downhill. And that's, you know, there's a whole podcast on that. You should go listen to it. There's a whole episode. It's great. Tonight, we want to talk about how uh, a manager who's engineering that culture that balances results and relationships needs to start with the why. Start with the why. That's our directive for the evening. Yeah, and so we, we you know, we, we kind of got introduced to this concept from Simon Sinek and, yep. uh, you know, his, his, you know, the golden circle video, the, you know, how to, how to leaders inspire action and the, he gives wonderful examples, uh, you know, you know uh, Martin Luther King and, you know, how did he create a movement? And, and it wasn't, right. it wasn't with his five-step plan, uh, but right. it was with, uh, with, I have a dream. And, yeah. and, and the why was, was encapsulated that. And I think you want to talk to both sides of that tonight. So, so yeah. the, the, the five-step plan, right, was the rationale uh, right. behind why, uh, why you know what? Why we're on this quest, this mission, this purpose, and then the the emotional why? What is the what is the the emotion that's driving what 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 it is that we want to ultimately become? You nailed it. You nailed it. And and the the rational one is maybe the easier one to you know kind of unpack. And so maybe we'll start there. Uh, but it's easily forgotten. It really is easily forgotten because we're moving fast you know, uh, business is fast and we're moving fast. And sometimes we forget that little alterations trickle downhill. And if we don't send an explanation on down the hill with it, um, it's, it's going to get misinterpreted. So my, I, I think I've told part of the story before. It's one of my favorite examples. Uh, but I used to work for a public relations firm that had a client that was a hospital. And this hospital uh, just very suddenly, their customer survey scores just tanked. I mean, just nosedive. And, you know, so they start investigating, like, what happened? You know, we didn't make any big policy shifts. We didn't, you know, change a department. We didn't lose a bunch of people. What What's happened that's made this, uh, you know, come about? And I don't remember now because it was before my time, but they did some research and sort of backtrack to find, you know, what's the root cause of all this? And it boiled down to a young lady who had been turned away from the emergency room. She had literally been told, we will not serve you. We will not take care of you. And it just sent shockwaves through the community. You know, that right. just people were so upset. Now, what did not get communicated was that she came to the ER asking for uh, a, an ex-boyfriend's name to be removed from her tattoo on her rear end. <laughs> so well who um, hasn't done that who has yeah, i mean we've all been there ER you know for an emergency tat removal yeah i mean it's a thing you know yeah. look it up i'm sure they have it in la i don't know uh but yeah they 
uh, this was not LA. Uh, this was a small town uh, that had the sort of the regional hospital for this rural area. And they, you know, they couldn't. I mean, there was a reason. There was a reason. And that reason was not really communicated as it went downstream. That's the, the image for me. You know, sometimes I work with a business where there's like some corporate uh, body leadership team way upstream and they make a policy change or they, they do something that affects pay plans or fill in the blank, right? There's just some change that goes downstream through the organization and that trickles downhill. If it doesn't trickle downhill without, uh, excuse me, if it doesn't trickle downhill with an explanation for why that change happened, uh, you run the risk of another saying we had in public relations, which was rumors love a vacuum. Mm -hmm. They will, they will, negative news will fill the air uh, of anything that we leave unsaid. They'll tell us why we did what we said we were going to do. And it won't be pleasant. Usually it will be, you know, the, the uh, worst case scenario. They will assume bad intentions on the part of leadership. Oh, yeah. So that's on us. You know, that, that's so, so that's my, my uh, rationale for the rational side of explaining the why. Oh, yeah. Well, and nobody ever, in the absence of information, no one ever imagines the positive. Right. <laughs> like you were saying, you know, it's, you know, we talk about this, you know, I, I take my car in for service. I don't hear for them, you know, you know, it's noon. I haven't heard anything. Well, I, I bet the engine's blown. <laughs> you know, that's why they're not calling me. You know, right. and then the, you know, the, another couple hours ago, I bet the car fell off the, the lift and burst into flames. You know, I just, that's right. why you, nobody ever goes, you know, I really don't know what's going on here, but I bet it's nifty. I bet right. it's for a good, good reason that we're just not privy to. You know, you're so, so right, because I have actually seen that play out on surveys, kind of uh, like the opposite scenario where uh, they don't pick the car up until later in the evening. And the assumption has been, well, the car's taken care of. And there are very good reasons why the car was not finished, but we never explained that why early enough in the day to the customer. And the customer assumes we are all idiots. Every one of us, the whole place, they don't care. They're, mm -hmm. they, they're incompetent, you know, just blah, blah. And it's all because we didn't take the time to explain. So the truth, the same on the inside of the organization is out. Oh, yeah. Well, it goes back all the way back to, you know, let's tie this back to the first summer blockbuster movie of all time, mm -hmm. uh, which was Jaws. Mm -hmm. And so Jaws was was light years ahead in its in its use of the animatronic figure. Right. And so yeah. and so the reality was they built this giant shark to use in the movie and it didn't work and they couldn't get it working as they were shooting the movie. Hmm. And so all you had was 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 glimpses and really good soundtrack, you know, yeah. ladies, ladies swimming, dramatic music, lady bobs underwater, oh, gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the movie, the movie was terrifying uh -huh. because it never showed the monster. And right. It wasn't until later they showed the, you know, in the movie they showed the monster. By then, your terror was was at right. such a fever pitch. People. People to this day don't go swimming in the ocean because of that movie. <laughs> right. It was just cheesy rubber shark. But the reality was they weren't able to use it in the vast majority as, as often as they wanted in the film. And so when people were left to imagine what the monster looked like, they imagined something much worse than they could ever portray on the screen. I had never heard that story. That's That makes perfect sense, though. Makes oh yeah, perfect. yeah, 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 yeah. Richard Dreyfus, Steven Spielberg, all these guys just sat around because the shark wasn't working. They sat around for hours every single day talking about how great it was to have been in show business and this would be their last movie. And, <laughs> you know, they were over budget and, 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 and you, you do that. And even the modern times, you know, you'll, you'll watch a movie and they'll be, a, you know, they'll show the monster's hand or whatever. And then when they finally show the monster, you go, Oh, it looks like that one from that other movie, only with like a bigger thing. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it's kind of a letdown. So, so yeah, if you if you don't uh, if you don't provide information, people will supply their own information, and it will never be positive. So that's a, a a good way to sum up the rational side of this conversation is that there's got to be an explanation given 
Um, but you did point out, you know, it, it's not the five point plan. It's the dream uh, to, to go back to Martin Luther King. So um, let's talk about that a little bit, Mike, because, um, you know, we've we've talked about the Simon Sinek approach and his idea of the golden circle. And the golden circle kind of lines up with how your brain is organized. If you look at it uh, from a, a, a bird's eye view that, you know, uh, decision making is in the center uh, of your brain right there with emotion. And what's not there is language, logic, math, uh, the things that are on the outside of the brain, uh, which are those rational explanations. Um, we need the rational explanations because then we can fill in, like you say, those, you know, sort of scary uh, blank spaces where we make up, you know, uh, negative, uh, you know, negative uh, speculation. Um, but that's not going to be fuel. And we're talking about fuel. Decision making is at the center of the brain, along with emotion. And, and that need, there's always got to be some sort of emotional motivation with that decision making, with that decision to act mm -hmm. yeah if we want people to buy into what we do there has to be a, an emotion around it it has to it has to inspire uh, and, yeah. and we talk about this with with the vision statements when we talk about a, 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 a yeah. department or an organization's vision statement it should it should excite and scare you mm. because it is it is that lofty uh, mm -hmm. of what it is that, that we want to achieve and so, and, and you see this all the time. You see this in day-to-day in -day life. Uh, you know, when people decide to get on board with something, the, the first thing I asked was, okay, what was the significant emotional trigger for that change? We've talked about that. Yep. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, yeah. There's nobody on the planet that doesn't know you should eat healthy. Uh, right. And so when you talk to somebody who's had a heart attack and survived and you're like, well, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm eating healthy and I'm exercising. <laughs> Did you know you should do that before the heart attack? Right. Well, yeah, but I didn't have that emotional significant event that, that caused me to take action and, and get on board. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so the same with whatever it is. I remember I was, I was leading this volunteer group and, and we, you know, in the history of our organization, there was this award and it was, it was the, the Henry Giesenbeer Trophy. And it was, ooh, ooh yes, yeah, very fancy. And we'd never won it in the like 30 year history of the of the, the volunteer organization. And we decided we were gonna win it for the very first time my year. And, mm. and so we talked about everything rationally that we had to do. We had to be in the top five, we had to complete mm. this, we had to raise so much money, right? Here was this rational list of things we had to do. And then I would spend time and I would, I would get the people to imagine at the meeting, I was, just take a moment and let's imagine what it's gonna look like when we're out in the crowd and they call our name and we rush the stage. You know, just think about what are you gonna, mm. what's that gonna look like? What's it gonna feel? Imagine the sounds and the, and the cheers and the high fives and, and all of that. And people started to believe. And, and, and at one point I, I, we, I said, all right, so the, the mantra became, we're going to bring Henry home. And That's so, good. and so we talk about, you know, Henry's coming to live at our house for the very <laughs> first time. And we're going to welcome Henry in. He's going to have his place on the mantle here in the front. And we'll get to visit with Henry every day after this, because we're bringing Henry to our house. I love it. And here's what it's going to take to do that. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about, you know, here's the, the concrete things that we had to do. Uh, and we, the group won it uh, for the very first time in its history. And then it won it for the next five years in a row. Oh, is that right? Uh, yeah. That's and cool. it was like, well, once Henry came to live here, couldn't let we him like leave. <laughs> <laughs> right. We had, we had to keep him around. We enjoy him. And, and right. so we, we personified the goal. We, we created emotion, imagination, and, and, a, and a, a really a, a, you know, the, kind of a, a visceral response to what would happen if we made this come true. Well, that's, that's a perfect example because of how the fuel had to keep being in the tank. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not a one-time thing. And you think about like, um, oh yeah, I mean, there are examples of it like, um, uh, oh shoot, what was the uh, Pepsi CEO who uh, Steve Jobs recruited to join oh, Apple? Scully. Scully? Yeah. yeah. Was it Scully or Sully? Yeah. 
Roger, Roger Sully, Scully, something. Anyway, um, you know, the, the thing that finally pushed him over the edge was, do you want to sell sugar water the rest of your life? Or do you want to put a dent in the universe? Mm-hmm. You know, big, scary. Um, it didn't work. <laughs> he wasn't a good CEO, right? But, but it was enough to motivate action that one time. And then the whole thing fell apart. Well, if there had been, you know, a, a why that really stuck, something that they glommed around, something that they talked about, um, would have been a little different. Would have been a little different. So your example is a is a really good one because you you made it. Well, like you say, you personified it. You you made it something that they got their uh, their imagination involved on, and um, that's a that that's fuel. That's fuel. That's motivation in the tank. Yeah, and it can take on all sorts of forms. Uh, you know, I've uh, yeah. you know, uh, I like a good rivalry. Uh, the yeah. why is yeah, we want to we want to beat so and so, and 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 the difference between a you know a com- you know a, co- a competition and a rivalry. Competition, I want to destroy you. Uh, I want to defeat you and 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 you know banish your existence. The rivalry is there's somebody that we compare ourselves against, and they drive us to be a better version of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and so that rivalry, our know, rivalry could be, we just want to achieve to the level uh, that's beyond those folks. Yeah. And, and that could be the why, uh, you that. know, and, and then what are all the, what are all the good things that are going to happen because we achieve this? So we, it's right. not just winning for winning's sake, but if we do this and we do it well, that means we will have to take exceptional care of our customers. If we do this and we do it well, it means we will have to have the best profitable year that we've ever had in our company. You know, if we do this and do it well, right. here's, all, here's these things that are going to have to happen. You know, and this is the the why. But but let's also talk about the specific things that will occur that make this why worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of times it, it does boil down to seeing the impact at the end, you know, for, for a company, it might be, you know, um, you know, customers that get taken care of and a difference that you made in somebody's life. Um, and uh, we, we honestly, you and I were talking about this uh, before we came on air um, that, you know, we were talking about, it's kind of hard to schedule these, you know, it's just a little bit hard to schedule. And we, you know, it's, this takes effort. Right. I mean, it, you know, we don't we don't just show up and press the record button and start yakking and, you know, it turns into a podcast. There's there's got to be at least a little bit of planning to uh, get us at the same time even to talk, let alone the topic. Mm-hmm. And you found out today that um, we had somebody that really appreciated the podcast and it shared it with others. Hi, Carol. We love you. We love you, Carol. Yeah. Um, so. Carol. <laughs> the, but, yeah, and, yeah, you think, okay, is this making a difference? Is this worth it? Right, right. Yeah, and then, yeah, somebody comes up to you and says, yeah, this was great. I've even shared it with other people. Yeah. Okay, that's and that's why we did it. We wanted it to help people and wanted it to, right. to be shared. Well, and okay. So, so since you brought that up, let me just tell you that while we were talking, I just suddenly got an alert um, that I didn't realize was going to come through. And uh, some uh, a, a company we talked about last time that I, I'm still not sure if I'm allowed to say their name, but a client uh, reached out to me and said, that was a good episode. Can we take that clip and use it in our management training? So, mm-hmm. you know, I guess verbally, Mike, I'll have to like get you to sign off or something. I don't know how this works, but, but you know, what a, what a nice thing to have said, you know, that like, that's, that's great. I hope it helps a lot of managers learn what makes their organization special that that's fuel in my tank, right? That that's part of our why is getting to make a difference like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. If we can uh, lighten and brighten somebody's life. Uh, the other thing we've, you know, we've got a few different whys. One of them is the, 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 what comes back to us just from us talking to each other, we learn whether or not anybody yeah. watching, you, you know, for those of you out there, if you're learning something great, yeah. otherwise, Mark and I are learning something. So we, we started doing this because we needed to keep our skills going during the pandemic. I mean, mm-hmm. the reality was this was us sharpening our saws, you know, while we were in a holding pattern. And then it was like, huh, that actually works. I really enjoy having these conversations. Mm-hmm. So here we are. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're right. It, yeah. It's, it's not easy. It's not convenient, but the why is strong enough that we continue yep. to do it and do it on a, on a consistent basis. Yep. I love it. Well, 
here's what I think I would say. I'm just trying to, you know, make this practical as much as I can, but um, you, you have to uh, develop the habit of making sure you've included the reason for a change into your explanations. You, you have to explain why a, why a change has come. Pay plan change, schedule change, uh, things that you don't even realize are changes, but everybody sees them. They do trickle downhill. And so you have to uh, control that a little bit by uh, including the why in that message, the rational reason. Um, but the flip side is uh, you might need to do a little time um, with your team if you haven't come up with the why. If you're not really sure about the motivation, uh, that, that deep-seated motivation, do a little soul searching, do a little journaling, do a little uh, thinking and talking out loud about why do we do this? If you, if you took a paycheck out of the whole equation, why would we show up to do this kind of work? And, um, and then once you've done that, now it's time for the really fun part. As Mike pointed out, you incorporate it. You, you bring that into all the conversations going forward. You personify it. You, uh, you, you, know, you visualize what it will be like, all the things we just talked about. Um, none of this happens without intentional effort, and that's why we're making a podcast episode out of it. Um, but we think it's a an absolute game changer for an organization that's trying to get both results and relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're in the midst of leading a big change initiative, right, just pause right now and think about: Have I clearly explained why we're doing this? Yeah. And, and does the why resonate with the people whom I need to to get on board to buy into this? Right. And if it, and if it doesn't, then, yeah, you've got to explore different ways to communicate it, explore what's in it for them and, and why this should be important to not just them, the organization as a whole. So. So, yeah. And one of the things and you the can customer, do is. Right? Yeah. One of the things you can do is just ask your people. So, you know, we've been working on this new thing. Yep. So. Why do you think we're doing that? Yeah. Um, because you don't like me and you want to make my job harder? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Dang it, you figured it out. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, just yeah, just yeah, do a spot check and, and yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. Can they enunciate not only the, the rational why? Well, it should get us more customers or whatever. But can they, uh, you know, can they, can they enunciate, can they verbalize the, the emotional why? Right. Love that. Well, you know who's why I know all about? Because oh, he you, tells you, us on a regular basis. You mean Mr. Emotion himself? <laughs> <laughs> now he's going to take offense at that, Mike Marshall. Uh, of course, he yeah. probably he probably gave up on listening to us long ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's never liked our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, John, if you're still here, take, take it away. And that, I guess, is that. It doesn't take a genius. No rights reserved, nothing trademarked, copyrighted, or even original. Feel free to give it to anyone, anytime, using any and all media formats. Warning, Mark and Mike may or may not make another one. I'm your announcer, and I did not get paid a nickel to do this. They won't even let me tell you my name. So until next time, if there is a next time, stay safe, be well. That's good enough. You could stay on the property, you're going to get arrested for trespassing. No, we're leaving, but now that you have the flip camera, you can I'm put just, that on YouTube, and now you have more footage of Sergio. He's a superstar, and you can get that like a million views. Right now. All right, all right, all right, we'll leave, we'll leave. I'm never gonna